This is my STEM project on the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis. To give a brief overlay, we'll start with the introduction. What are the Northern Lights? The causation, why do they occur? Uh, the location, where are they located? Where are they visible? And the appearance, which is the overall colors and shape. Well, what even are the Northern Lights? These are a natural display of light in the night sky found in higher latitude regions. There are swirling rivers of dancing lights when solar winds or sun particles interact with the magnetic field, and you'll learn a little bit more of what exactly they are in this project. <laughs> now, these are some things that I won't be talking about completely in this presentation, but I think are still notable. The solar cycle is an 11 year cycle of the sun that has a solar maximum and two solar minimums. The solar minimums are at the very ends and the maximum is in the middle. The maximum is when the northern lights are the most visible because that's when the most particles are discharged from the sun. The equinoxes are when the northern lights are most visible during March and September in the last two weeks. And we'll be talking about particle, particle collisions quite a lot during this presentation because that's what causes the northern lights overall. Now, many people think the aurora borealis begins where we see it on Earth, but it actually begins 94 million miles away. The Northern Lights display is caused by the sun, specific, specific, specifically when the sun discharges loaded particles or cosmic radiation at extremely high speeds. And this is an astonishing 45 million miles per hour, which was only found out recently in June, 2021. This speed is caused by alpha waves, which are here on the screen. And these are a part of state of matter called plasma as atoms break themselves down into electrons and ions. These particles are where our journey begins. They're the stars of the show. When these particles collide in the atmosphere, they produce tiny little flashes of light and color accordingly. A single instance of the Northern Lights contains of, often contains multiple colors and layers displayed by element and height. Red and green auroras are both caused by collisions with oxygen atoms, but they only grow red from about 300 to 400 kilometers above Earth's surface and green from about 100 to 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Nitrogen collisions cause pink and blue. Come on. I don't know why that's not going. Okay. Now, Earth's magnetic field redirects these particles towards the poles, as shown here. The particles of the sun, the particles discharged by the sun, are shown by the yellow and the orange, and the magnetic field of the Earth is shown by the blue. Now, the particles can still make it into the Earth's atmosphere in these little green spots, respectively at the top and bottom of the Earth. Now, these green spots are also referred to as aurora ovals, which are the only places that auroras can occur. Now, this means that the Northern Lights aren't alone. It means they have some sort of relative, you could say. I was actually completely unaware that the Southern Lights were a thing before this project. The other thing that I was unaware of was that the, nor the Northern Lights produce sound. They kind of pop, they sizzle, crack, and whoosh. The brighter they are, the louder they are, is said by most people. They're caused by static, the sound is caused by static charge. Atmospheric disturbance by the auroras is what also causes them. Additionally, Earth's magnetic field also causes the shape of the auroras. And that includes rays, arcs, curtains, and coronas, disks. Now, these shapes can be put in two categories, discrete, which are brighter and follow Earth's magnetic field, and they kind of move with slight changes in the magnetic field. They also occur in diffuse auroras, which are dimmer, and they don't actually have a particular shape. Due to the lack of shape, they move very freely. They're hard to see because the charged particles are more scattered than that of discrete auroras. Now, my reasoning for choosing this is it's very interesting. I wanted to do something primarily based on science because whenever I participate in STEM, I usually go into something involving mathematics. I intended to research more science with this and it's related to astronomy, which is something I'm planning on going into. Thank you for your time. And overall, I'd like to remind you the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis are caused by discharged sun particles colliding with the Earth's atmosphere, atmosphere which leads them to the poles. I'd like to remind you I couldn't have done this project without my partner, Kaylin Schutzer, and without the articles I was able to use for research, which are shown in my citations here. This will also be included in my partner and I's written report.